Good morning. It is uh, Thursday, July 27th, just after 9.30 in the morning. My name's Larry Cedar. Back with you for another session on what I call scanning. Just like it sounds, S-C-A-N-N-I-N-G. Scanning is the incremental release of muscular tension to achieve a deep state of physical, emotional, and mental calm. So I try to do a half hour session every day. For anyone who might be interested, I do it for myself and I do it for anyone who else who might find it of benefit. Basically what we're doing, and I'm going to really try to keep it brief today in terms of description, is move ourselves from a state of contraction to a state of expansion. Contraction is the bringing together of forces, ideas, thoughts, effort, concepts to advance an agenda. Contraction, building things. Squeeze your hands together. Expansion is the reverse, letting go, being open, accepting, released, calm, still, empty. Because we vacillate between those two states throughout our day, contraction and expansion, we tend to become overly contracted. We want to learn how to expand so that we can bring ourselves back to center, to have a more centered, balanced life. And when we're off center is when we feel distressed or troubled. So when you're centered, you feel balanced. So let's just get right into it today. I've done previous sessions where I talked about the origins of the technique, which you can uh, go to look at on the scanning page. It's currently spelled S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G on Facebook. If you search for that, you'll find previous sessions. But it is now going to just be scanning as it's normally spelled because it's just easier for people to remember and find. So you can go back and find one of those sessions for the origins, but basically we're going to be working to expand. We're going to start with the breaths. We're going to start by taking three deep breaths followed by 15 seconds of absolute stillness and silence. Here we go. Three deep breaths. Fifteen seconds, absolute stillness and silence. Don't move a muscle, but continue to breathe. <clears throat> Deep breath. So what we're trying to do through these sessions is build an awareness of the contrast between being contracted and expanded. So you start to become aware throughout the day what your state is. And when you are feeling over-contracted, stressed, tense, worried, obsessing about anything, you are overly contracted. You want to use techniques which expand you. There's a million ways to expand, just as there are a million ways to contract. But you're building a consciousness of your own ability, your own power to control your state. So you don't have to feel like it's just spinning out of control. You can feel like at any moment during your day, you can expand and bring yourself back into balance. We start with breath because breath is expansive by nature. Take a deep breath. You're expanding. And also because when we're contracted, we tend to hold our breath, contraction. And we sit in stillness and silence because the opposite of doing and taking action and speaking and thinking is stillness and silence. So we're reversing the contractive process, bringing ourselves into a more expanded state. You can't contract and expand at the same time, so the minute be you begin to expand, you brought yourself closer to center. So we did three breaths, 15 seconds of stillness and silence. Now we're going to expand on that. We're going to continue to nudge ourselves into a more expanded state. Five deep breaths, followed by 30 seconds of absolute stillness and silence. Five deep breaths, 30 seconds, absolute stillness and silence, but continue to breathe. Here we go. Thirty seconds. Absolute stillness and silence. Don't move a muscle. But continue to breathe.
Take a deep breath. And just try to tune into the difference between how you feel now versus how you felt five minutes ago. We've taken some expansive steps. Deep breath, stillness and silence. We're moving ourselves away from a contracted state. How do you feel different? Now, I came to this session today <laughs> in my normal state, agitated, uh, nervous, obsessing about all the things I have to do today, physically tense. And as usual, I resisted starting this process because contraction wants to stay contracted. And I took the initial first very simple steps of taking deep breaths and sitting in stillness and silence. So if you learn nothing else from these sessions, just remember, take a breath, sit in stillness and silence, bring yourself back to a more expanded or ultimately centered space. We're going to extend this even further. Now we're going to take seven deep breaths, followed by a full minute of absolute stillness and silence. And what we're doing is we're gently guiding ourselves into a more expanded state. If you hear thoughts of resistance, if you say this isn't working, I don't want to do this, this feels uncomfortable, I want to go back to what I was doing, this is your contractive self trying to hold on to its contracted state. It's just doing a job, its job. Contraction lives to contract. So when it tries to, when you try to get yourself to expand, it resists that, it wants to stay contracted. But we're building in a new consciousness, a new ability which says expansion is of equal value. Soon you'll want to expand as much as you want to contract because you'll recognize how it brings you into balance. But if you feel resistance, that's why. 70 press, 60 seconds of absolute stillness and silence. Here we go. Last one, seven, 60 seconds, absolute stillness and silence. Deep breath. So we're all very good at contracting. We do it all day. We work hard, we eat, we interact with people, we create things, we destroy things, we build things, we think. So we're good at that. It's a familiar, readily accessible process. And we tend to become obsessed with it because we see it as the only avenue to success or to peace of mind. What should I do? Worry. That's a contraction. I'm not really doing anything, but the worry makes me feel like I'm doing something. That contraction makes you feel like you're accomplishing something. So we forget the value, the equal value of the opposite process, which is expansion, because we feel like when we let go, we are losing control. We're no longer in control of our life. We're no longer seizing the reins and making things happen. We feel like we're letting go and we will fail. We will fall. But the opposite is true. When you expand, you open yourself up to possibilities. You clear your mind. You see more sharply because you're not clouded by your own contractions, you're actually experiencing life in a very vivid, real way. So it's this 
equally important to know how to contract, to expand as it is to contract, but we lose touch with that. We forget we have the ability to do that. We're convinced that in order to relax or to just let go, we have to have a, a scotch and soda or smoke a joint or get a massage. We forget that we have the innate ability to do it ourselves, but it's unfamiliar. We spend a great portion of our lives contracting. We forget that we also know how to do the opposite expand, which will bring us into center. So that's all we're doing here is we're practicing expansion and we're getting a set of tools that will help you expand, a very simple set of tools that will help you expand anytime. And it puts you in full control of that process because you can do these scanning exercises for 30 seconds or for 30 minutes. Um, but the more you practice them, the better you will get at them and the more familiar you'll be with the sensations of expansion. And you'll begin to understand that you can bring yourself into a state of expansion anytime you want. You may experience terrific resistance. I always do because I'm very contracted by nature. The only advantage I have over someone who hasn't practiced as long as I have is I know for a fact that expansion works. I may resist it, but I'll go to it because I have no doubt that it works. Someone who's new to it might get frustrated and say, yeah, this doesn't work, forget it. Or this is scaring me, this is making me uncomfortable, forget it. But what I've learned over the years is that it definitely works. It definitely brings me into balance. It definitely calms me and clears my mind and brings me to a state of peace and calm from which I can make better decisions, from which I can feel less discomfort and pain or impatience or worry. And I can actually deal more effectively with issues in my life. But practice is good. So we've done what I call the preliminary steps to scanning. These are very simple steps for bringing yourself into a more expanded state. Take a deep breath. Sit for stillness and silence. In stillness and silence, simple. This is a physical process, scanning. There's nothing philosophical or intellectual about it. It's a process of the body. And it's designed that way. Because I wanted a technique that was so simple. You don't have to learn anything. You don't have to read a book. You don't even have to remember the name. I call it scanning. You can call it whatever you want. All you need to remember is that you have the power to expand. And I call it the incremental release of muscular tension because the simplest way to expand is to release muscular tension. The muscles can be your guide. Muscles can either contract or expand. They can't do both. So once you've begun expanding, you've stopped contracting. Take any muscle in your body and let go of tension and you've expanded. So we do these breaths in stillness and silence as a warm-up and now we move into what I call the nuts and bolts of the technique, which is the actual muscular release. So squeeze your hands together, tight, that's contraction. That's a really great thing. That's your strength. Contraction, you know, sometimes people get the wrong impression from these lessons that contraction is bad. No, contraction is, that's how we exist. We, our bodies, are a contraction. They're bringing together of molecules and cells and skin and hair and bones and muscles to form a body. The ego is a contraction. It's a formulation of our sense of self. That's how we live. The problem is when we become out of balance or overly contracted. So there's nothing wrong with contraction. You just want to bring yourself into balance. Someone said to me the other day, oh, I've been so contracted. I said, of course you're contracted. You're living life. I walk around 99% of every day being contracted because I'm trying to engage in life and succeed and have relationships and have a job and so forth and so on. That's life. That's the stuff that books are written about. Movies are made. Stories are told. We're, we want to live, but we want to be in balance. So we want to bring in the equally important aspect of our existence, which is expansion. So you've been squeezing your hands now for a while. Keep squeezing. And you see how the strain feels good, but after a while your hands start to get sore and you kind of want to let go because you're overly contracted. So we do the opposite. We expand. On my count, release all the tension in your hands and let them drop to your side. Three, two, one, and release. And, and it's interesting how you have a sense of relief, which is very close to the world word release. Relief, release, letting go. So that's what you just did. You just expanded. So through the breath, through the sitting in stillness and silence, and through the release of muscular tension, we are gradually moving ourselves into a more expanded state. Well, you might say, ah, I still feel anxious. I still feel worried. This isn't working. This isn't working. Judgment is a form of contraction. Judgment says, this is good. This is bad. These are delineations I've set up in my life so that I can determine what's good and what's bad. These are contractions. These are creations. When you're completely expanded, there is no judgment. Nothing's good or bad, up or down, left or right, in or out. It just is. So the judging part of your consciousness, the part of you that gets frustrated or disappointed or angry, that's a contraction. So again, we need to judge sometimes, but if you get over judgmental of yourself in particular, 
you're becoming contracted. So all these steps are working to expand you. Again, if you feel frustrated, if it quote unquote isn't working, that's because you're trying to move out of a contracted state. Contraction judges. As you move more and more to an expanded state, you won't feel the need to judge anything that's happening. You'll just be participating in the process and you'll feel the benefits. Squeeze together, three, two, one, release. And that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna move through the whole body, incrementally releasing muscular tension. You can start anywhere. You can just work with your hands, three, two, one, release. Just feel what that feels like to let go. That's expansion. Just keep doing that. Three, two, one, release. You can stay there all day. <clears throat> or you can do what I do, which is move through the body, the different muscular zones, as I call them, and incrementally release tension. Slightly moving yourself into a more expanded state until you'll feel eventually your body will just let go. So let's start with the face, what I call zone one. On my count, faces are very expressive. We use the muscles a lot. I want you to let go of all the muscular tension in your face. Three, two, one, and release. So you see how it takes muscular tension to create expressions. I have a somewhat animated face, so I'm used to using those muscles. So when I release, it's like I turned off the power to those muscles and they're just letting go. So you want to pay very close attention to what that felt like. That feeling of oh, relief, release, letting go is scanning. So you want to infuse your day at any given moment throughout the day or at the end of the day, or the beginning of the day, you want to start bringing this process into your life. Make it as much a part of your life as anything else you do, as anything else you spend time on. Surfing the internet, playing tennis, going for a walk, doing your work. These are all parts of our day. And now you want to try to add scanning into your day to bring yourself into balance. So the face, three, two, one, and release. Okay, so you've begun. already my body is taking deep breaths because I probably, if I've been in a contracted state, which I typically am, <laughs> if you were to meet me on the street, you'd say, you can't be the same guy that's teaching these sessions. You seem so uptight, so nervous, so high strung, because <laughs> that's how I go about my day most of the time. It's part of the reason I developed this technique, but you'll begin to see that you can shift yourself over into a more relaxed state through scanning. And that's why I use it to bring myself into balance. The face, three, two, one, and pay attention to how that felt. Deep breath. Now, zone two, for me, you can come up with your own division. You can say zone two is the elbow, whatever you like. These are just suggestions. Zone two is the top of the head. Concentrate for a moment on the top of your head. Put all your focus there and see if you can feel the state of the musculature in the top of your head. It might be tense, it might be relaxed, but just heighten your awareness of that part of your body. And awareness is a key aspect of scanning. Muscular awareness, paying attention to where you're at on this continuum in terms of a muscular group. How tense am I? How much can I let go? Let's see. Top of the head, three, two, one, and release. And I felt my brows drop and I felt a sort of loosening of the flesh in the back of my head. So that's what you're looking for. So we just expand it a little bit more. The face, three, two, one, and release. Top of the head, three, two, one, and Deep breath. <sighs> Two things you should never avoid doing in the scanning process. Taking a deep breath. If you feel the impulse, take it. That means you're expanding. Sitting in stillness and silence. If you suddenly feel a compulsion to just sit and not do anything, take that moment. That's expansion. Because what you've done is release your sense of compulsion that you must do. That something must be happening. No. When you're expanded, there's nothing to be done. There's nowhere to go. Nothing to think, nothing to worry about. No judgments to be made. You just exist. And it's a very peaceful, calm, quiet place. Now, if you're a creative person, like I'm an actor, my daughter's a painter, my other daughter's a writer, if you're a person that is looking for inspiration, there's two ways to go. You can attack it and try to search aggressively for ideas, fine. There's the alternative, which is to let go. Be open, let the ideas come to you. When you are expanded, you've made space, you've created a space 
for ideas and inspiration to enter. When you're thinking, 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 your mind is crowded, there's no room for new ideas. But when you've opened your mind, expanded, let go, things can suddenly occur to you. That's why I think we get so much inspiration sometimes in our dreams, because we've let go. We can't do anything. We're sleeping, and then there's room for ideas to rush in. So it's a great process for creative types. Okay, face, top of the head, zone three, the back of the head. Unless I've already done that. I'm not sure. Let's do it again. Three, two, one, and release. And you'll notice when you're expanded, you start to forget a lot of things, like what day it is, like what time it is, like what I just did or what I plan on doing. These are all delineations which are made through the process of contraction, deciding this is this and that is that. As you start to expand, you stop paying attention to such delineations because it doesn't matter. You're in the moment. Nothing matters except that you're a human being sitting and breathing and experiencing the room, the sense of your heart beating, the sounds around you. Nothing else matters when you begin to expand. Now you can always come back from that and get, you know, jump into the river, as I always like to say, and begin swimming. But you can take this moment to go to a place of emptiness and nothingness. It's how we bring ourselves into balance. Zone four is the neck. Think about your neck, what tension you may or may not have in it. And on my count, let go of all tension in your neck. Three, two, one, and... And I always feel an impulse to take a deep breath after I've done that because most of the time, most throughout the day, I'm holding tension. There's an expression, keep it together. Well, what are we doing when we're holding tension? We're trying to keep it together. We're afraid that if we let go, we will fall apart. We're desperately afraid of falling apart. Nobody wants to fall apart because we think we'll lose control of everything in our life that we've worked so hard to hold. But the truth is, if you let go and fall apart, you're usually just fine. Now you have to find a moment, appropriate moment to do that. You don't want to do that in the business, middle of a business meeting or driving a car down the freeway. You want to take some time, set aside some time to let yourself fall apart, to let go. That's expansion. Zone five again. Zone four, again, the neck. Three, two, one, and release. Moving right away into zone five, which is the shoulders, very much connected to the neck. Let them drop. Three, two, one, and release. And again, three, two, one, the shoulders drop and release. Take a deep breath. And once again, assess how do I feel? What's different about how I feel now, having taken these handful of expansive steps versus how I felt 20 minutes ago? And if you feel even the slightest sense of release or calm or stillness, congratulate yourself. You've done it. It's a very simple process and no amount of scanning or release is unimportant or, or invaluable. Any amount of scanning, any amount of expansion is of value because you've moved yourself towards center. So don't judge how well it's going. Congratulate yourself on the fact that you are in that process, the expansive process. Zone six is the chest, stomach in front of the waist. Three, two, one, and release. And part of this process is tuning into where you're holding tension. As many years as I've done this, I completely forget that I'm holding tension. And sometimes I think, oh, I'm fine. And then I'll start to scan. I'll go, whoa, wait a second. I was holding so much tension in my chest and stomach and waist, I didn't even realize it till I focused on it and made a deliberate attempt to release it. Chest, stomach, front of the waist, three, two, one, and release. Deep breath. <sighs> Zone seven is down the back into the waist and pelvis. The pelvis is a very important region of the body as far as the contraction expansion continuum goes because we tend to hold a lot of tension in the pelvis. It is the area around which is focused sexuality and waste elimination, if I may say so. Very sensitive areas about which we're frequently self-conscious or nervous. So we tend to hold or clench that area out of insecurity. So you hold a lot of tension there. So try to let go however that feels to you in that pelvic region. On my count, three, two, one, and release. And again, three, two, one, and release. One more time. Three, two, one, the pelvis, and release. And all these muscles have a sort of clenching sensation when they're contracted. 
So it's like letting go of your fist, a clenched fist. All of these moments of a release are just like going, oh, unclench your fist, stop fighting, let things be. Last zone is zone eight, down the legs, across the knees, and into the all-important feet. Think about your feet for a moment, how tense they may feel, muscularly contracted, and on my count, let go of every ounce of tension in your feet. Three, two, one, and release. Very sensitive area. Again, both the pelvis and the feet, as you release, you might feel nervous. These are areas where we really want to maintain control. Same applies to the neck. We want to control our voice, our face too. There's areas where we maintain control that may feel a little dangerous to release. But again, you're just sitting in a room. Nothing's going to happen. So take that chance, even just a little bit, to release the smallest amount of tension. Three, two, one, and the feet. Release one more time. Three, two, one, and the feet. Take a deep breath. So these half hour sessions are just meant to reinforce the technique, to remind you of how it works or how you might try it yourself. They're brief, they're half hour. When I do my own scanning sessions, I usually do an hour if I can. Sometimes I do it when I get into bed at night, it helps me get to sleep. Or when I wake up in the morning, it helps me actually wake up. Because over the course of an evening of dreams, you, you're thinking, your body's working, you're worried, all sorts of things bring you to a contracted state. That's why we so frequently feel like so miserable when we wake up because over the course of the night, we have contracted. Coffee is a, is a, is a very desirable chemical expansion because what it, it does, it stimulates us and brings us out of that almost hermit-like state we move into when we're sleeping. So I'll either do it when I go to bed at night or I'll do it for an hour. I'll wake up early and do it in bed for an hour in the morning. And I'm amazed at how much tension I've accumulated over the course of an evening. But once I've released it, I wake up feeling refreshed, relaxed, and happy. <laughs> so, um, so I just saw a message from Donna. I'm so glad I could be of help, Donna. That's fantastic. Um, I'm really happy to help anytime. Um, I think we could all use this. Um, we all could benefit from learning how to expand and become more centered. So that's it for today. Um, it's called scanning. It's the incremental release of muscular tension to achieve a deep state of physical, emotional, and mental calm. That's all you're doing. Squeeze your hands together. Three, two, one, release. Muscular, muscular release. And even the incremental smallest amount moves you towards center. So never be hesitant to even do it for a minute. When in doubt, take a deep breath. Sit in stillness and silence. Find a muscle group and release it. And build this consciousness into your day so that expansion becomes equally important to you as contraction. That's the only way, contraction, expansion, that you can find true balance in your life and come to center. So that's it. Um, if you came in late to the session, I repost it on my Facebook page. It's up for about an hour or so. Then I transfer it over to the scanning Facebook page. Scanning, this process, I used to spell it S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G just to kind of make it different, but it was too confusing. So now it's just called scanning. But if you do a search on Facebook for S-Q-A-N-N-I-N-G, I think it's still listed that way. If you don't find it, try the regular spelling and the session will be there as well. Uh, people have told me sometimes that they just, um, they don't watch the session, they just have it in the background, they listen to it while they're working, just to kind of reinforce some of these ideas. Even as you're working, you can <sighs> take a breath and expand. So that's it. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that today. All these sessions are meant to do is reinforce the technique. I'm hoping you'll take it on yourself and begin to make this a part of your day. I recommend keeping a log because I like to do at least an hour a day. If you keep a log, you're aware of how much you've done or haven't done, and that can be cumulative. That can be six, 10-minute sessions or or um, 12, what does it work out to? Five-minute sessions, 12, uh, 20, I can't remember, 25-minute sessions, something like that. But just try to keep track, and then you'll begin to feel a sense of accomplishment as you begin to make this part of your day, as much as anything else you do. Um, you may experience a lot of resistance, as I do, after all these years, that's natural. The resistance you're feeling is your contraction. So when you feel resistance, that's good. That means you've struck gold and expand to counteract that contraction and see what it does for you. I uh, hope you have a great day. Um, uh, share this with others. Um, it is my intention to share this um, so that anyone who does feel they can benefit from it will. Take care. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.